This video is for entertainment purposes only. Good day. Greetings to all. Excuse my absence. I had to go and sort some things out. Anywho, do you remember when this happened? And there was a racist rally. And the very man that this man came to dislike was the very man that carried him out of all the drama. Absolutely hilarious. Well, I hope that with my videos, this is what happens. We all become one, but I doubt it. Okay, now I've explained this many a times, but I know some people, they're just determined to be racist. So everybody's skin colour, eye colour, hair colour is determined by melanin. Okay? Okay. We all fit under these categories. New melanin, which is either black or brown. Pheomelanin, which is when you get a bit ginge, or the me melanin is not going to the melanocytes, or oculocutaneous, when it's really not getting there, okay? And so, if different people from different places get together, then your child is going to resemble the other person, either in skin tone or in features. So, why are we in denial about something that is very obvious? Let's see this. And what we call that cultural appropriation. Anywho, the thing about this mindset concerning pigment is that it's the very source of life on the planet. So we try to do this for everybody. So some people, they don't go by science, they go by the word of God. So let's just delve. A good day to correct some false teaching and lies that you've been told while sitting in church or even watching movies, um, reading books. Moses, chosen by God, given the Ten Commandments. Most of the laws are based on that today. Even your constitution in America is, some of it is based on the Ten Commandments. Moses, born in Africa, raised by Africans. Moses was a Hebrew, an Israelite, and a black man. All Hebrews were black. He married a woman from Ethiopia, and his sister Miriam didn't like this. She didn't like it because Ethiopians had a different culture to them. So she was talking bad about Moses marrying out of his race. So God was listening to this and God said, Miriam, Aaron, who the one she was gossiping to, and Moses, please come to the temple steps. I have some things I want to speak to you about. So they were on the temple steps and he said, Miriam, you have been talking about your brother Moses, slandering that he's marrying outside of his culture. That is a sin. He said, so for your punishment, I'm going to strike you with leprosy and whiteness. So she was struck to become a white leper. Now, you can read all this for yourself. The whole story is in Numbers 12, starting at verse 1. So then Moses saw this and he he said, please, God, you know, she's my sister. She probably didn't mean to talk about me like this. Please, I beg you, restore her back. I don't want my sister to be a leper. So God, he loved Moses. So he said, Moses, if she was talking bad and your father found out and spat in her face, for seven days she would be ashamed and have to stand outside the house. So for seven days then, she will become a white leper. Then after seven days, I will restore her. But do not forget this lesson. So this you can read for yourself. So next to racism, which is a very dark thing in people's hearts, is jealousy and envy. And be very careful because what the, the Bible says about envy is, and you can read it, Proverbs 14.30, it rots your bones. See, the first thing I want to say is that it's talking about these Africans because ancient Libya was Africa and the Berbers of that time were called Libyans, right? As I've shown you a few times before. I know people don't like it, but it's just true. So most of what she's saying is because in that area, people were slaves, the Carthage, Tunisia, all of those places up top. The Red Sea was like in between Asia and the cusp of Egypt. The cusp was Kemet. That's the only place Kemet was. So Eurasia was where they were having all these arguments, long story short. Oh, and Laurasia, they were all part of the same thing. So here's a piece. Let me read it to you just so that you can get some context. Yeah, plus what I didn't say is that the Nile is basically just that area at that time. That's what they were talking about. And also, I think some people will miss the point, especially being melanated. Why did that lady say she was turned white? Because she was bad mind. 
This is why I keep saying you want to profess that your melanin makes you amazing. But some of you are bad mind and some of you don't like other people who are less melanated. But how did people become white skin? Because Miriam was bad mind. Anyway, I think it's very important to have an introduction and iron out the things in the beginning. So there was a guy who came to my page one time and said, how dare you, Mongolians were never black. Uh, 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 uh. Exactly what I thought, little Mongolian boy. The problem is, is that there's a lot of denial. And the denial is the racism. And the racism is um, carried by the vehicle of religion. Because that's what it was about. People were enslaved. Some people had the power. So other people presented a new God. And then people with their stupid mindset or because of the fear, went along with it and enslaved also their own people. So don't get it twisted. This is what you're seeing. These are Laurasians, which is North America. And this is a Cushitic person who's from Ireland originally and ended up in the desert. Anyway, I shall continue. These are some notes about the history of Berea, Sankela and other Ethiopian slaves from the borderlands of the Sudan. Okay by Richard Pankhurst. Warfare, which is the Ethiopian region, dates back to the dawn of history, led to the capture of slaves of many ethnic groups. At one time, that meant people from different places, but currently it doesn't mean that. I'll speak on it. A significant proportion of men, women and children thus seized were taken. However, from the less powerful communities, on the periphery of the state, notably from what is now the borderlands of Sudan, from peoples who being in many cases culturally distinctive, and hear this, were regarded as morally easier to enslave than other inhabitants of the area. Many of the slaves thus captured were of darker than average hue and sometimes of negroid appearance. Their distinctive colour and features cause excessive pigmentation and non-Semitic appearance to be identified with servile status. Here's where I'll say this. People of the same colour, not quite complexion, were in war with each other at a certain stage because... At that point, it was about neighbouring villages. It was about legitimacy within families. I hope that you're cottoning on to all the clues, but I'm going to make part one, two, three, four, as many as I have to, to show you that the, the proof or the evidence of who is who has always been there. It's just the racism has prevented us from seeing. And this is what I'm breaking down. For instance, when we say Romans, this is who we think of. But what we don't realise is that it depends on the era. And then we perceive history based on this image. But remember now we know that Septimius Severus is not who we once thought he was. And because people don't show you the true depiction of who people really are, it feeds the negative narratives and the isms most important Roman who actually ever came to Britain was the African emperor, Septimius Severus. He was hold on, hold on. Okay. Are you telling me there was an African emperor? That he was one of the greatest Roman emperors. And so you see here that he was born in Libya, which was Africa, ancient Africa, and he was a Roman. So this is what I'm trying to say to you. That term was specifically for Ethiopians. And they weren't just in one area. And due to all this warfare, they moved around. He, he fails to see London anymore as being an English city. So, so you, I, Do you agree with that, Mr. Roger? Uh, well, in parts of London, I do, yes. You see, T.H. Huxley told us ages ago that in Britain, of the Celts, there were a dark stock and a light stock, and that the Gauls weren't dissimilar to them either. But we see a man of a light white complexion and then here's the evidence of the Celts right here and their royals so what can i say build the walls of roman london Why? so the city of london 
to this day is defined by the African Emperor Septimius Severus. This is a man who's there all the time. He's right in front of us all the time in the British Museum, but nobody knows unless you dig into the story. You see, the history that we think we know is probably upside down and inside out. And we have so much animosity towards each other when our own people did us things. And as for the current climate, well, those people took it from the previous climate. And you see, this guy, who's in the piece that I was reading to you, here at the bottom section says, a ruler of Aksum went to the borders of Egypt, and it says, I took what I wished of their young men and young women, and of their youths and maidens, and all their possessions. Evidence on the relations between the Aksumite state and the black peoples, and we know the black peoples are the Ethiopians of that time, on its borders is later provided by two Giz inscriptions of Nzana, the early 4th century king of Aksum, and describe one or more expeditions against the Noba, who's a Sudanese, on the eastern side of the Albara River. Talks about them being attacked for breaking oaths. He also says that they made expeditions to India where there was all these Christians that had converted from their previous faith. And he said the people that had gone there were Greek speaking and that they were colonists. See, one thing that becomes obvious when you research is that places change, maps change. That whole Middle East thing is to do with the bridge that was made there. There was no Middle East up until that point. People then become people that they have um, conquered and then they claim the history and they claim the name of the country. And, and, and prior to all of that, people were actually of one nation, even though there were arguments. And this is the thing that people don't seem to get, that you can claim to be somebody now, but you derive from another group of people. You are the descendants of somebody. Do you understand? And I would have thought that this generation was different. It changed. But when you go on social media, you will see people of like a young age still keeping up this racism and saying things, you know, like they take ownership of things and not knowing where they come from. The Gauls themselves had like 16 different tribes. You see, what I'm saying is that we were together, races, colours, creeds, and what you think people are arguing about is not about God at all, because does God need us to argue for him or her? Come on, you really think that you were created, put on earth to fight God's battles? Which God? This is what I'm saying to you. People, you might think you're somebody that belongs somewhere today, but, you, you know, even now there's, there's uh, issues and there's fights that nobody really wants. But until we address what was, then how can we make sense of what is? And trust me, there's traitors in your own camp too. See, as we know, slavery has happened for hundreds of years to many types of people. But you see, Ethiopia continues to be a point of discussion because they were the Africans that they were speaking of. But if you read this piece, it will explain to you that Ethiopia, in geographical terms, isn't in one place and it isn't one people. But what it does say is that their rights, their sacred rights, in the ancient world is above all others. And in these next videos, We'll explore the reason why that is. What I also wanted to say is that this slavery didn't just happen to black people. I know a lot of people believe that, even people that are not black, because so certain things that people say. See, some of the reasons why I do these videos is people like to say things and they probably wonder why I don't respond because I know that it's a lack of um, knowledge, a knowledge of self. Do you know what I mean? And even... Some black people enabled what was going on. And you see your Bible, it talks about it too. See, a lot of people think it's just fairy tales, but you have to, you cannot read something without delving into the history of that thing because once you get the history, it's going to make so much sense. 
And so some of the animosity that I get um, from all types of people, but surprisingly from young people that are ethnic, is it makes me realise how much they, they just don't know. The fact that that history was hidden from me, it made me want to uncover that history. If you 